session with the basic concepts related with genetics. There was a time that when doctors knew very less about the genes and chromosomes and it was considered a very difficult topic. But now they have discovered a lot about the genes, about the chromosomes, how do they function, what is their importance. And now it has become one of the most fascinating medical sciences and most interesting to read. Uh, initially in our lectures, we will be discussing the very fundamentals and very basics. Once we have covered the basics, then we'll go to the advanced concepts of genetics. When we are talking about the very fundamental, all of you know that life is primarily dependent. All the life programs are primarily stored in DNA. The point number one is that all the life program is stored in DNA. For example, why a monkey is a monkey? Because it has different DNA than you. And why onion is different from you? Because onion has different DNA than you. Basically, in a fertilized ovum, in a fertilized ovum, all the genetic material which is present over there, that have all the complete program to make structurally and functionally complete organism. Right? And all that programming is basically in the molecule of, yes please, DNA. DNA. Right? So you can say the master plan of life for every organism is present in DNA. DNA. And then DNA expresses itself in the form of RNA. You can say master plan is in DNA. And from the master plan, cells make functional copies. The functional copies of DNA are RNA. And from the RNA, we can make proteins. From the RNA, we make proteins. Different RNA help in formation of proteins. And once you make the proteins, you know some proteins are structural proteins, some proteins are structural proteins, and there are other proteins which are functional and regulatory proteins. Right? Now, in a particular cell, DNA will express certain RNAs and RNAs will make particular type of proteins and those proteins will determine the structure of the cell as well as function of the cell. Is that right? So it means that DNA determines RNA, RNA determines the type of proteins present in a cell and types of cell determine what kind of organ will be made and assembly of the organs will determine what type of systems will be made and how the system structurally and functionally work determines which organism you are. Right? So, to understand the genetics, our initial lectures will be fo focusing on DNA. Right? Today, our main discussion will be what is the structure and function of DNA. Right? Now, when we talk about DNA, any one of you will define what is DNA? Any one of you will define, please, what is DNA? You are allowed to make mistakes. I don't mind it. Even those people who see in the recording, they won't mind it. Right? So, anyone will define what is DNA? Yes, please. Yes, Kashif. DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. Yes. Okay, this is one way to explain it. Anything else better than this definition? What is DNA? DNA is a polymer of linear polymer of nucleotides. That's so simple. What is DNA? Write it down. DNA is a linear polymer of nucleotides. That's it. Again, I will repeat. What is DNA? DNA is 
अनब्रांच्ड लीनियर पोलीमर ऑफ न्यूक्लियोटाइड्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल दैट इफ आई से दैट दिस इज अ स्ट्रिंग ऑफ डी एन ए स्ट्रैंड ऑफ डी एन ए इट मस्ट बी मेड ऑफ मैनी वॉट आर दीज थिंग्स न्यूक्लियोटाइड्स सो इट मीन्स टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट हाउ डी एन एज मेड एक्चुअली यू मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड हाउ न्यूक्लियोटाइड्स आर मेड लेट मी रिपीट इट अगेन आई वॉज सेम दैट द मास्टर प्लान ऑफ लाइफ इज प्रेजेंट इन डी एन ए राइट एंड डी एन ए मेक्स अ फंक्शनल कॉपीज विच आर विच आर कॉल्ड आर एन ए एंड आर एन ए एक्सप्रेस इज इवेंचुअली इट सेल्फ इन प्रोटीन्स एंड डिफरेंट आर एन एज मेक डिफरेंट स्ट्रक्चरल एंड फंक्शनल प्रोटीन्स इज दैट राइट इज दैट क्लियर एंड दैट डिटर्मिन ऑर्गेनिज्म स्ट्रक्चर एंड फंक्शन so it means organism all the structure and function is primarily dependent on dna right so initial discussion is about dna now what is dna dna is a linear polymer of nucle unbranched or linear polymer of nucleotides or we can say many nucleotide put together and making a long chain what is it dna or rna depending upon the type of nitrogenous bases and type of sugars right what type of pentoses are used now before we really go into the detail of what is dna what is the relationship of dna with the chromosome what is the relationship of dna with the genes what are alleles right before we delve into that detail we will discuss what is a nucleotide what is the basic structure of nucleotide right now let's start discussing about what is a nucleotide you know if we have many nucleotides we can make a molecule of dna, DNA but first we must say or rna you can say if we have many nucleotides we can make nucleic acids nucleic acids are dna and rna now we'll try to make a nucleotide what is nucleotide actually let's suppose we give the duty of making dna to this lady she needs some raw material to make dna let's suppose hypothetically we are going to synthesize dna by simple elements the first thing which we require for dna synthesis is the first raw material we need is nitrogenous bases nitrogenous bases right now to make the dna there are two types of nitrogenous bases they are double ringed structures and the single ringed structures in about to make a molecule of dna first of all we must have nitrogenous bases then what are nitrogenous bases these are nitrogen containing carbon rings what are nitrogenous bases nitrogen containing carbon rings now there are two types of rings there are double ring structures and there are single ring structure double ring structures are called purines double ring structures are called purines and single ring structures are called yes please pyrimidines right so we should have nitrogenous bases there are two types of nitrogenous bases larger nitrogenous bases with double rings smaller nitrogenous bases with single ring double ring structures are purines single ring structures are pyrimidines is it clear now there are two types of purines yes please there are two types of purines very good adenine and guanine right you can say we can present them like this these are double rings in the same way the two types of pyrimidines which are used in dna yes please cytosine and thiamine or thymine thymine t h y not t h i a that is a vitamin 
right now look purines are adenine and guanine pyrimidines are cytosine and thymine is that right so in this way the raw material we have provided her with four raw material we have provided her with adenine we have provided her with guanine we have also provided her with cytosine and thiamine but this is not enough to make dna right the next point is once you have these four nitrogenous bases these nitrogenous bases should be fused with sugars sugars with five carbons such sugars are called pentoses so second thing they need is pentoses right it has nothing to do with the pents pentoses right now pentoses are basically special type of sugars which have five carbon there one carbon here another here here and there is another carbon here and of course this is not carbon point this is oxygen right carbon number 1 2 3 4 and this is carbon number 5 right now if at position number 2 and carbon position number 3 if they are hydroxyls then what is this sugar yes please ribose, ribose. very good this is ribose but if you puncture this from here oxygen has gone out right and there is no hydroxyl only hydrogen here then it is called deoxy ribose so you can say that this pentose sugar with double hydroxyls as position number carbon number 2 and 3 is used for rna because if ribose is present the molecule will become rna and if you remove this oxygen from here and then at carbon number 2 it's only hydrogen molecule become deoxy ribose oxygen has gone out so it is deoxy ribose and if in a nucleic acid this sugar is used deoxy sugar is used then that nucleic acid is going to be dna that is going to be dna am i clear now the madam has nitrogenous bases and nit madam has sugar is that right purines pyrimidines and deoxy ribose and what she is going to make dna so next step is that she should fuse sugar and nitrogenous bases she should fuse sugar and nitrogenous bases let's suppose we make these sugar molecules and we will fuse them with yes please nitrogenous bases let's suppose here we have added adenine here we have on the side added yes guanine here we have added yes cytosine excellent and here we have added thymine now what you see on the side of the sugar we have nitrogen nitrogenous base let me repeat it what we have done this was sugar molecule on the side of the sugar molecule we have added nitrogenous base so such sugar molecules which have nitrogenous base on the side these nucle these molecules are called nucleosides these are called nucleosides so next time what are nucleosides nucleosides are pentose sugars right and these sugars attached nitrogenous bases on the sides right what are nucleosides these are sugars pentose sugars with nitrogenous bases attached with them now this is nucleosides the name of the nucleosides look here when adenine bind with the sugar it is no more adenine it is adenosine what is it this is 
adenosine right when guanine bind with the sugar then it is yes please guanosine. guanosine excellent and when cytosine bind with the sugar this is called yes please cytidine and when thymine is fused with the sugar this is called thymidine excellent thymidine so what we have learned that madam took nitrogenous bases fuse them with sugars is that right you put the pentoses on the nitrogenous bases and now they are called nucleosides, nucleosides. different type of nucleosides are adenosines guanosine cytidine thymidine now the basic difference guanine is just nitrogenous base but guanosine is nucleoside adenine is just nitrogenous base adenosine is nucleotide nucleoside now these are nucleosides now but you know dna is made of nucleosides and nucleotides Nucleotide. so it means now we have to convert the nucleosides into nucleotides she is very near to make a dna now she is going to convert nucleosides into nucleotides right now how do you do that answer is very simple that to this nucleoside you add phosphates you know phosphates are energy molecule more phosphates attached they energize the molecule right now let's suppose this is adenosine and with this adenosine she has okay this is adenosine molecule right and this adenosine molecule is nucleoside now at point number 5 you know carbon number 5 was at the top we put a phosphate we are putting here a phosphate when this nucleoside is attached tied up with a phosphate it is called nucleotide so what are nucleotide nucleosides tied up with screwed up with phosphates right so when nucleosides attach with the phosphates they will convert into nucleotide so now you see how many types of nucleotides you can make right now yes your mathematics is good all of you have passed the primary class good so this is nucleotide with adenine this is nucleotide with guanine here is the nucleotide with yes cytosine here the nucleotide with thymine is it right now and why the nucleotide because their fifth positions are having attached with them yes please phosphates they are having phosphates right now these are nucleotides now what should be the name of this nucleotide yes please kashif excellent it is adenosine molecule with one phosphate what is this adenosine monophosphate and if we add one more adenosine diphosphate and if we add one phosphate more adenosine triphosphate and then this molecule is called atp adenosine triphosphate molecule i told you phosphate molecules are energy rich now this adenosine in adenine with sugar adenosine with monophosphate one more diphosphate one more triphosphate adenosine triphosphate it has phosphate bonds here and when these bonds are broken lot of energy is released so this is energy rich compound is that right so we can say that nucleotide may be monophosphate or diphosphate or triphosphate of course what about this who will put the name for this one uh, yes please gtp guanosine triphosphate and if we have added phosphates here also right this is another nucleotide and this is yes please 
saturated in triphosphate and if we add phosphates over here and now what is this molecule thymidine triphosphate is it clear so we'll just recap it we are going to make dna initially we said what is dna dna is basically basically a polymer of nucleotides right dna is a unbranched linear polymer of nucleotides is that right now we are going to make what are nucleotide right we started with very basic that to make the dna we must have nitrogenous bases there are double ringed and single ring double ringed are single ringed are pyrimidines double ringed are adenine or guanine and for dna single ringed are cytosine and thymine but if there is rna then in place of thymine there is uracil excellent then there is uracil but not in dna now if you have these four nitrogenous bases just add these bases on the sides of sugars pentose sugars if carbon number 2 and 3 both are having hydroxyls then this is ribose sugar if oxygen is out of it then it is deoxy ribose then it is deoxy ribose now once you have deoxy ribose sugar you can add with it nitrogenous bases when nitrogenous bases are added to this side then this complex should be called nucleoside so what are nucleoside nitrogenous bases added on the sides of pentoses is that right now when adenine is added this become adenosine guanine is added guanosine cytosine cyto uh, cytosine is added cytidine thymine is added thymidine and these are different types of nucleosides once you have the nucleosides then if you add phosphate to the carbon number 5 you know this was the carbon number 5 at this point we add the phosphate so at the carbon number 5 right when you add the phosphate here or here when you tie up, tie up the phosphates here then these nucleosides are converted into nucleotides so we can say these are different types of nucleotides right and when these nucleotides are made into a long chain then these nucleotides are making dna is that right now we'll make for our functional purposes will make a simple diagram of nucleotide let's suppose a typical nucleotide is like this yes please what is this component of the nucleotide sugar what is this component nitrogenous base and what is here phosphate now we can see one thing for every nucleotide this end is five end you know this is carbon number five and what is this end three end every nucleotide has one five end other three end we can make a simple diagram for us we can make a simple diagram for us let's suppose i make a phosphate like this okay if i make this lady like this what was the difference it is not shut shut is like this actually japanese make the ladies like this and i will not mention the nations which make the ladies like this right but anyway don't think of ladies right now let's talk about dna so this phosphate is like this right yes now you tell me what is this sugar sugar molecule is just made like this and here is what nitrogen space and this is a doll this doll is nucleo tight so it means many such dolls put together will make one molecule of dna so today onward when someone tells you they are nucleotide you must think of this doll this is a doll 
with sugar on the side of it nitrogenous bases having a head end with phosphate and this doll has head end and foot end head end is 5 end and foot end is 3 end is it clear now what is the basic structure of dna let's talk about this Nitrogenous bases with sugars are nucleosides, with phosphates are nucleotides and when nucleotides are making linear polymers, this may become DNA or RNA. Now, yes please, do you have any question? Yes sir, does that mean suppose we have adenosine or guanosine, uh, we cannot know what type sugar they are, it could be either deoxidized or ribose. Yeah, you are right. We can't know by the name. You are very right. Actually, that is why with adenosine they write D, then it means it is deoxy. And if D is not written, intelligent people know this is not deoxy. Right? Okay. Now we come. Let's suppose there are many dolls like this. This one doll. This is guanine. Then there is another doll. Cytosine. Then there is another doll. Thiamine, then there is another doll, and this is adenine, right? Now, if this dolls are attached with each other, this is a piece of single strand of yes DNA. This is a small piece of single strand of DNA. As I told you, what is DNA? DNA is simply a polymer of nucleotides. Is that right? Any question up to this? No. Now, there is one very basic principle that when we are going to make DNA, for example, there are enzymes in our body which work together to synthesize DNA. To start a DNA, first of all, we will go in detail later how exactly DNA is replicated. But right now, just for the basic concept, let's suppose this is our first nucleotide. Yes, what is this end? Five, five end. What is this end? Three. three end. Right? She has already made many nucleotides. She has to make a linear polymer. And then these nucleotides will convert into a string of DNA. Now, there is a rule. Let's suppose that we have to put the next nucleotide should be with cytosine. Actually, when DNA synthesis is going on, lot of, you can say, abundant supply of all different type of nucleotide should be there. Any with adenine, with guanine, with, yes please, cytosine with thiamine. All these should be present in abundant amount. When a cell is replicating DNA, it means it has to put lot of nucleotide in a chain form. So, cell fluid must be rich in these molecules. But remember, if this is our first molecule, right? And suppose this is the next molecule which is supposed to come and fit here. Now, there is a principle. It is well established, right? This molecule is going to this one, right? Or we can say, this particular nucleotide is going to this one and get attached with it. So it means this is the needy one to be fitted here. It should take some gift along with it. You know it. Even nucleotide knows the social life. Yani this nucleotide, if it want to make a relationship with it, then it has to take some gift. Gift of what? Currency. Energy. Phosphates. One phosphate is not enough. One phosphate is not enough. There should be three phosphates. If it is having only one phosphate or two phosphate, it will not be accepted at this point. 
right? It means none of them should be monophosphate, all of them should be? Triphosphate. Yes, triphosphate, right? So when in the cell DNA synthesis is going on, the nucleotide which are present within the cell, these nucleotides should be monophosphate, diphosphate or triphosphate, yes please? All of them should be? triphosphate and because triphosphates are rich in energy because these triphosphates are rich in energy so they can be accepted over here this is point number one that they, they should be having abundant supply of all the nucleotide to be utilized and all of them should be in the form of triphosphate now another thing not only should bring the gift this is the nucleotide which wants to fit here, right? It has to put its head in the feet of this. Very primitive behavior seen in DNA formation. That the incoming nucleotides should put its head bow down on the feet of already established DNA string. So it means the five end of this should attach with the three end of the established one. Right, now let's talk about, that has been brought here. And these are the gift molecule, right? And this is also supposed adenine. This was the original, this is the, this one which has come. Now, enzymes will utilize the energy of these phosphates and establish a relationship between these two. Enzymes will, enzymes which make the polymers of DNA. Enzymes need energy here. So, this triphosphate will bring the energy and these two will detach away and energy will be released. Yani these two will be removed. These are very sad, you know. These are very, very sad. This is a pyrophosphate unit. These are pyrophosphate unit. So from triphosphate, pyro pyrophosphate unit is released. And during this process, the energy which is released, that help to establish a bond between the, yes, three end of the established chain and five end of the incoming nucleotide. And now energy has been spent here. Is it going to be a strong bond or weak bond? Strong bond. Investment is there. ATP has been utilized. Phosphate energy has been utilized. Right? Now these two have attached. Now, let's suppose this one has to come into this. Same process will repeat that that will put its five end in the feet of this already. And now again, what will happen? This is guanine wala and Again, pyrophosphate is released, am I right? And a bond is made in between them. What is the name of this bond? Yes, anyone. What is the name of this bond? Very good, phosphodiester bond. So we can say in DNA formation, the nucleotides are held together by these red bonds. These red bonds are phosphodiester bonds. These are phosphodiester bonds. Now, these phosphodiester bonds help the DNA formation. How? They help the nucleotide to be polymerized with each other. Of course, now you are going to tell me. Now, next nucleotide is in the line. Again, this incoming nucleotide should be monophosphate, biphosphate or triphosphate. Bye. Triphosphate and with the three end of the established chain and which end will come? Five end. They will bind with each other. Here is cytosine and what is again released? Energy and pyrophosphate and that energy is utilized to build a bond between the three end of one and the five end of the incoming. And again this bond is called phosphodiester bond. Right? and so and so forth. So what really happens that another let's suppose 
thymidine is there again pyrophosphate is released and again there is a 3 5 bond and what is this bond again please repeat phosphodiester bond again tell me is it strong bond or weak bond strong bond, strong bond. right because later on we will see that this is not easy to break but simple change in pH cannot break this bond simple change little bit change in the temperature of the medium cannot break this bond you know simple environmental changes cannot break the bonds which are really strong bond someone very nasty has to work to break this bond is that right you know who is that nasty you know many nasty people but I want to know that who knows that nasty person or that nasty enzyme which can break down such a strong bond don't tell me the sister of the husband okay phosphodiesterase and it is breaking down a nucleic acid look here if an enzyme come and break down here this is a nucleic acid DNA is a nucleic acid RNA is a nucleic acid so if an enzyme come and break down here it has to be very very bad enzyme let let me show you that enzyme yeah this enzyme can cut here right it can break down the nucleic acid so this enzyme is called nuclease so these are the nucleases which can break down the phosphodiester bonds right write down not simple pH changes not simple slight temperature changes these are the nucleases of course a nucleus which break down the DNA is called DNases. Nucleases which break down the DNA are called DNases. DNases. And some nucleases break down the RNA bond, so they should be called RNases. Excellent. They should be called RNases. Now you know what are DNases and what are RNases. These are basically nucleases. And what are nucleases? These are very powerful enzymes which can break down the backbone of DNA. Then again, there are two types of nucleases. Some nucleases can only break the bond of the nucleotides which are present at the end. Either they will cut from here or they will cut from here. But some are very, very naughty. They can even break down the bond from the center. Let me tell you, if DNA, we have a long chain of DNA, I think it's a bit, okay, everyone can suffer something, including the nucleotides, right, of course, there should be nitrogenous bases also, that's a DNA molecule. Some nucleases can attack only at the ends, terminal ends, they remove one nucleotide, then again they remove another nucleotide then they may remove one more nucleotide so they attack at the end and start removing one by one piece they are less naughty these are called exonucleases what are these called exonucleases so exonucleases primarily attack the ends of the nucleic acid chain right but those very naughty ones, right, which can attack even in the center, right, they can break down in the center even, they are called endonucleases, endonucleases. You must be having some friends which are exonucleases, from your group they can remove one by one, and some are very dangerous, they separate the group into two, endonucleases. Is that right? I don't know you are talking about which country I think you are from Ethiopia <laughs> okay let's come back we are talking about medical sciences not Ethiopia right so what we are talking about that number one DNA is a polymer of nucleotides when DNA chain is made nucleotides are fused together this fusion process requires energy so incoming nucleotide bring extra 
energy and this energy is released as pyrophosphates are detached and energy is utilized to link one nucleotide with the next one and the bond which is made is very strong of course very strong what is the name of the strong phosphodiester bond and to break down this bond the group of enzymes are nucleases, nucleases. and if nucleases break down the DNA then they are DNA. DNAs and if some nucleases attack the RNA backbone to break down the phosphodiesters then it is RNA. RNAs some nucleases break down from the center from within yes these are called endonucleases why you don't talk loudly and if nucleases break down nucleotide from the ends one by one these are exonucleases is that right? You know them as you know your friends. Some are endonucleases, others are exonucleases. But some are very good. They are polymerases. They bring new friends and add to your group. These are polymerases. But they are very clever. They only accept the new friends with gift. This is going on even at the molecular level. So don't be upset if practical life is going like that. Fine? Now, once we have made this DNA strand, right this DNA strand which we have made it can be written in many ways you know there's adenine adenine guanine cytosine yes thymine again adenine and guanine right now all of this DNA strand it will always have one five and free and other three and free it means of course on one side there is head end and other side there is tail end. not tail end foot end please who has tail here foot end right so head end is five end and foot end is three end so not only nucleotide a single nucleotide has head end and foot end even the whole chain has head end and foot end so whole chain can be presented like this yes Okay. And what is this N? 3N. So every DNA chain has one phosphate and phosphate containing and free end and other hydroxyl containing. Right? Phosphate containing is 5N and hydroxyl containing is 3N. So we can say that this chain is having special polarization. It has two poles, five pole and five end pole and three end pole. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Now, sometimes, why you are laughing? It uh, helps you to, okay, now you are comfortable? Now, uh, you want some here, here? I don't know how to draw here because I lost them many years back. Okay. Now this is 5 and the 3 end, right? Now, actually look, single strand is nothing in the life. All of you, at least most of you, keep on looking for the other strand. Same is true about the DNA. These things are very much ingrained, hardwired in our molecules even. Now this molecule does not want to live alone. It wants another molecule there. Is that right? So that it should become double stranded. Is that right, Dr. Saab? That this single strand should not exist alone commonly. It loves to have another strand. Now let's suppose how it arranges another strand. Okay. Of course, some enzymes should come and help. Some enzymes should come and they should help to make another strand here. But this is a very, very funny thing. That if you want to make another strand for it, should the strand be identical? No, it should not be identical. Identical things usually don't attract, except in certain circumstances. Right? Adenine always fuses with? What? Yes. Look, let me tell you one thing. There's a basic principle. This is adenine, right? Very happy. 
it will always make bond with thymine, but in a very unusual fashion. Please don't think it's something nasty. Yes. There are many relationships which are really stable are like this. Right? And, but when you have a relationship like this, the five end of one and three end of other, right? Do you think they will have a strong bond with each other or weak? Of course, weak. No one likes to remain in this position for a long time. Isn't it? So there are weak bonds here. These weak bonds in between them are called hydrogen bonds. Is that right? These weak bonds are called hydrogen bonds. Actually, adenine always coupled with thymine. And if you talk about guanine, guanine, so it always coupled with cytosine. But again, you know, it is also happy. Actually, you know why it is happy? It thinks it is upside down. Yes, it depends on how you perceive the thing. Same is here. Guanine is very happy, but you will be surprised even. Cytosine is very happy because it thinks that it is right and other side is upside down. Achha, guanine and cytosine, you know, they are happier couple. They are happier couple. So they have three hydrogen bonds. Right, they are less happy. So they have two, connect, two hydrogen bonds. So adenine and thiamine have two hydrogen bonds. Guanine and cytosine have? Three hydrogen bonds. So which one is stronger bond? Guanine and cytosine. And weaker bond, adenine and thiamine. But on the whole, did you invest a lot of energy to put them together? No. So these are overall, these bonds are weaker bonds or stronger bonds? Weaker bonds. These are stronger bonds. These are weaker bonds. This is like a full family chain. Is that right? Now, when adenine few couples with thymine, we say these are these two nitrogenous bases are complementary to each other. They are not identical. They complement with each other. In the same way, these two nitrogenous bases also complementary to each other. Right? Now, let's suppose now it needs the other strand and enzyme start working. How the enzyme will work? This is a funny thing. Enzyme which polymerize, attention please. Let's suppose I'm the enzyme. I'm going to make a new polymer for this strand, another polymer here. Most of the enzyme which make the polymers of nucleotide, they read the nucleotide chain from three to five end. This is a very important principle. The enzyme, of course, look, if I have to make a copy, complementary copy, I have to read this strand and then make a copy here. Complementary copy. I should bring in front of guanine, yes, cytosine. In front of adenine, thymine. But I will not start making chain from this end. I will start making chain from this end. Foot end. You should start from the foot end, right? Now, so enzyme will start from the foot end. Right, and it will read from the three end. Right, but it will polymerize in this fashion. Enzyme will okay. I will make uh, this. Which color you want? Green. Green. Okay. She wants some Islamic color. Now look here. This is very sad situation. And guanine should be coupled with. Yes, please. Cytosine. Cytosine. And then there should be another nucleotide brought here. And what should be here? Thymine. Thymine. And of course, what should be the relationship here? Phosphodiester bond. And what should be the relationships here? Hydrogen. 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 Triple and double. Right? Now we'll come to. It is something like a nucleotide which is trying to run away from this business. Now, this is thiamine. What should be here? Adenine. And what should be the bond here? Phosphodiester. Now, so and so forth. Right? Another chain will be made. 
and this chain yes please guanine, guanine. and here it should be cytosine. cytosine and here it should be thiamine, thiamine. and here it should be thiamine. thiamine right and of course which bond here please phosphodiester yes hydrogen bonds in between double, double triple triple hydrogen bond yes triple hydrogen bond double, double hydrogen bond double hydrogen bond now we can see with one strand we have one more strand right as far as nitrogenous bases are concerned if adenine are always with thymine and if cytosines are always with guanine if in this chain formation this principle is observed that guanine is always with cytosine and adenine is always with thymine. Then we call that these two chains have nitrogenous bases which are complementary to each other. So we have seen that we have made complementary to each other. Is that clear? But there is one thing. It is a 5 end of it and it is a 3 end. But on this side, is it the same? No. Here is the 3 end and here is the 5 end. It means relationship is somewhat like this. Yes. Your foot end. Right? What do you think? These two strands, even though as far as nitrogenous bases are concerned, these are complementary. As far as nitrogenous bases are concerned, these are complementary. But if you look at their backbone, are they parallel or not? Yes. They're parallel. Look, if I have two markers, these are the heads of these two markers. If these markers are like this, these are the parallel. Are they like this? No. They are like this. When two chains are like this, they are anti-parallel. They are anti-parallel. Anti so we can say that 5 end of 1 has 3 end of the other and 3 end of 1 has 5 end of the other. So we can say both strands, even though as far as nitrogenous bases are concerned, they are complementary with each other, but as far as they are phosphate sugar backbones are concerned, these molecules are anti-parallel to each other. These are anti-parallel to each other. A bit of the terminology now. Congratulations, you have made the DNA molecule. It was too simple to make, right? You just took nitrogenous bases, fused them with the sides of sugars. And what you made? Nucleosides. And you tie up the nucleosides with phosphate. You end up with nucleotides. Then nucleotides put together are making nucleic acid. Right? When they are put together, what are these bonds in between? Phosphodiester bond. Strong bond, weak bond. So need to be, they can be broken with little temperature change? No. Can they be broken with little pH change? No. We need special enzymes to break them. These enzymes are? Nucleases. If nucleases break from the end, then these are? Exonucleases. If they break down from within, endonucleases. Then I said, in nature very few things are alone. Right? This strand should have one more strand. One more strand. And if one strand is 5 to 3, then other strand is going to have its 3 end with the 5 of the first one. And second strand should have 5 end with the 3 end of the first one. When this situation is seen, we say, as far as nitrogenous bases are concerned, if every guanine is with cytosine and if every adenine is thiamine, we say as far as nitrogenous bases are concerned, these two strands are complementary to each other. But when we look at their backbones, right, 5 end fuses with the 3 end and 3 end fuses with the 5 end, this type of arrangement is called anti-parallel. Anti so today onward, you will remember whenever there is double stranded DNA molecule, Whenever there is double stranded DNA molecule, if it is a normal molecule, then nitrogen, as far as nitrogenous bases are concerned, both molecules, both strands should be complementary. But as far as backbones are concerned, they are oriented 
anti parallel is there any question here there is no question now one more thing that is that these are not only simple strand then these are twisted then these are twisted for example If this is one DNA strand, right, other DNA strand is twisted around it like this. And of course, it's very easy to understand. If this is the five end of the one, what should be the other? Three, Three end. And, 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 and you see, let me follow it. It is the three end of this one. What should be the? Five end. Five end. Is that clear? And these are what present in between nitrogenous bases. These are complementary to each other and they are held together by hydrogen bonds. And backbones are made of phosphate and sugars. And they are held together by phosphodiester bonds. Right? Yes, it should have its three end here. And it should have five end here. Now, this is double stranded DNA molecule. In this double stranded DNA molecule, you can see there is some minor, if you move your finger on curves of this, I am talking about the curves of DNA. When you move your finger on the curves of the DNA, what do you feel? There is a minor groove, then there is a very big groove, then there is a minor groove, then there is a major groove. So, flanks of these molecules are grooved and repeat, repeatedly there are Minor and major. So, man, what do you think about these groups? Do they have any importance as far as DNA is concerned? Yes, they do have. Right? I will tell you right now, but before that, I want to tell you that they are minor groups and major groups. For example, this is minor groove, this is minor groove, here is minor groove, here is minor groove. Yes, this is. Major groove, major groove, major groove, and major groove. This importance of this. These grooves determine what type of different factors will bind with DNA and regulate the expression of genes. Number one. Number two, there are some drugs which are related with it. This is a drug, very interesting type of drug, which can sit only in the minor groove. Let me draw the drug like this. This drug look like a? I hope you have seen at least one duck like this. Right? It's like a duck. Actually, there are some drugs which are like duck, duck molecule. These ducks get intercalated. Intercalated at this point. These ducks sit over, fit into minor groove or major groove? Minor groove. And when these ducks sit into minor groove, yes, this is a group of drugs, right? They are just like ducks, right? And they disturb the minor grooves. And if minor grooves are disturbed, attention plays. If you want to replicate the DNA, you have to open up the DNA. If you have to replicate the DNA, then you have to open up the DNA. Is that right? Now, if this duck is there and holding this minor groove, can you open up? No. No. Normally what happens, when a cell is going to divide, when a cell is going to divide, what really happens, that is DNA, both strands will go apart and every strand will make a new copy. Is that right? Now, if we have given this drug, it fits into minor groove, can enzymes which are going to copy the DNA can run down comfortably? No. no. Suppose this is the enzyme which polymerizes the new DNA molecule. It runs in between. Here it will fall out. You can see it. Yeah. 
with tears. Why? Because the ducts are there and the minor groove and these ducts don't allow the polymerases to run it. Can cell replicate its DNA? No. Can cell proliferate then? No. no. This drug is dactinomycin. This drug is? Yes, please. Dactinomycin. So, dactinomycin molecules basically interclate into minor groups. Dactinomycin molecules basically interclate into minor, minor groups. And then they interfere with replication and transcription of DNA. And if they don't allow the DNA to make more DNA or they don't allow the DNA to make more RNA. So, replication and transcription is disturbed. This drug is used as anti-cancer drug. This drug is used as anti-cancer drugs. Now you know how dictinomycin works. Let's have a break and then we'll continue again.